Hello everybody and welcome to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels. This week I'm looking at something a little bit different that I'm really excited about in the United States. But just to kind of take this through, I'm not going to drive this, it's just a look at. So without any further ado, let's go have a look. Da -da -da. This is absolutely fantastic. We're at station number seven in Asheville in North Carolina. And they very kindly said that I can have a look at their fire truck. It looks massive, but in actual fact, it's not that much bigger than Jupiter. Jupiter has a slightly smaller cab, so if we would say remove this section here, that would be the same size as my one. And the pump on these trucks is here, whereas Jupiter's is hidden in the back. So if we kind of remove that, that gives you an idea. So Jupiter's is about six foot smaller, I guess, maybe a bit shorter. So let's have a look at this thing. Right, so the first thing is just how much more has gone into the general impression and look of this. There's a lot more chrome and shiny things making it pretty. It has this very impressive front grille, but all shiny and chrome because Americans love shiny chrome. And then very nicely stuck in here, number seven, because it's from the number seven station. So this truck is built by Pierce. And like Dennis did, like Jupiter, they build fire engines. It's a custom chassis and a custom build ready specialist vehicle. It's not like what we've done in the UK now where you take a standard lorry chassis or truck chassis and you get it converted by a company into a fire engine. No, purpose built proper machine, which means you can get a lot better final product because it's designed specifically to do that rather than trying to make something fit onto a different chassis. So yeah, good work to the Americans here. Oh, it's quite a beast, isn't it? The, uh, the other thing to notice about the height of this is we saw it coming out of the fire station earlier and I kid you not, it's got about that much clearance. It's, it's very... <laughs> I was like, oh, that's tight. Having a look in here. Well, this is the thing I wanted to do. Oh my God. It's huge. Absolutely massive. And there are so many more buttons. We have power. So apparently if I hit emergency master, oh, everything's come on. Are these now flashing? Do we have lights? Awesome. And then the different lights, you can turn them on or off, I guess. So is everything on now or everything off? So if I turn, hit that, that will turn the roof lights off. Awesome. That's all really seems quite simple. All the flashing lights. The engine hidden under here is a Cummings 400. And frankly, I have no idea what that does, how much it generates, or how fast this thing can go. But everybody here speaks very highly of it. It's quite a short truck, especially by American standards. And if anything, they say it's a little bit overpowered, but that's never a bad thing. But it runs really nice and smoothly and does everything they want it to do. So we're not going to complain about that at all. There's also a little copy of the computer here which we'll talk more about when we go over there. But all the truck systems can be accessed from here with five simple buttons. And so they can see everything that's going on up here. Looks a bit more tidy than mine. Automatic gearbox is down there. Visibility, yeah, it's um, somewhat limited by the stuff there. Those little uh, silver sticky uppy poles you can see at the front, they're my markers for when the bumper is, because I can't see where the bumper is here. But I can see that sticking up there. And I can see the other one sticking up the other side, which just gives me a little bit more of a clue where the stuff is. The gentleman I was talking to about this was saying that driving these things fast comes with experience. You know, if you're doing it every day, you get more and more confident with it. I would not be happy driving this fast and I drive a truck for a living and have my own fire truck. This is just the next level of big. And this isn't even a big truck by American standards. No, sorry. This is, this is a relatively small one. So, oh. Also, it's got these really nice things like reflective surface here, which serves no real purpose as far as I'm aware, apart from to be able to see ourselves and be like, we're looking good. Right. The crew compartment itself, far larger than my own truck. Clues has more seats. There's another seat here for riding backwards. Normally they crew this with a crew of four, much more space to be able to, oh, move around you can stand up a lot easier my one you have to be a bit more cramped now, so maybe i can't stand quite up in the middle when it's slightly higher the thing to note though in here is how much wider this truck is than jupiter jupiter's got a 
four bench seats at the back so you could take four people in the back whereas this with the the seats individual seats and the spaces between them for the seat belts and things there's significantly more space back here than there would be in in mine and also a lot more well lengthways because jupiter you've got about this room and your feet are there and that's the front compartment whereas it's got basically that space again and there's just more space here you can see they've got their uh, fire overalls ready to go because this is an active fire engine we're at a, an active working fire station hoping they don't get a call because then this kind of walk around will be cut short very quickly Cook their helmets jackets all the equipment ready to go which i guess this is the back of the engine it must be hey it's a big engine in here i mean i've chatted to a gentleman in the uk who had a, a vintage fire engine and that which came from america and that had a 20 litre engine because it was massive and it did two gallons per mile nice grippy handrail there you know make sure you don't slip and fall but the big difference between our trucks in the uk and americans is the pump is here on the side obviously with jupiter and the dodge the pumps mounted in the rear of the truck coming off the pto this one is generated here which is very very different everything on this is computer controlled by these little dials here and a little computer here which is now turned off because when the machine's running it is so loud that we have to be like several steps away to actually have a conversation but you can control everything about the pump and a lot of stuff about the truck and find out a lot about the the system of the truck how it's running everything else just by pressing the buttons along here all the other controls are these dials here and these are pulled out and then twist to lock so we can turn on the different pumps this is the uh, water input if you've got the, the large scale four inch pipe and that comes and feeds the, uh, the pump from here and you can open or shut using this ring valve around the side of it then the operator stands here and can control everything that shows us how much water we're taking in and then that's the pump discharge pressure and what they can do using the computer is they can set that to be a constant amount and the machine will rise or lower the revs depending on how much water is coming out so your operator with a hose doesn't suddenly get a spike in pressure and go whoa which makes life a lot easier the way we used to do it on a mechanical pump is you have a discharge valve that if it rises the discharge valve lifts and sprays water out elsewhere stopping the, the operator and to be fair a couple of the guys here prefer the older system because the electronic system is sometimes takes a bit lower uh, longer to respond and if you're at the minimum revs the minimum pressure it can't do anything about it if you've got a good flow at the engine uh, idles about 1000 rpm it can't drop any lower so if you want to drop the pressure there it, it can't if you've got a really good flow of water but apart from that it's actually quite good and then the gauges up here will show us the engine temperature the uh how much fuel it's got oil temperature oil pressure and everything in order to maintain and keep running and then just everything here so you can see what you're doing and there is far far more control on this than there would ever be on my own truck the truck has some of these very useful foot pedals which fold out like that which allow you to climb up up here which is where they store more equipment on top of the pump we've got traffic cones spades uh more traffic cones and various other just general things that they need day-to-day -day life and then going this way they put all their hoses laid out we've also got these suction hoses which are a far greater diameter than my ones at home in fact they about six inch diameter and i think my ones at home are about four inch these are quite big um the yeah these are the ones for sucking up water from life like ponds or rivers streams that kind of thing oh, i really like them they're they're a really nice little way of doing it fold up quite nice the bulldog on the side in case you're wondering is the mascot of the local university which is just down the road so station seven has adopted it as their own kind of mascot and appears on their fire trucks i think they were saying that station five or station four across town has a similar thing with another school which have a ram or something and they put that on their fire trucks so that's quite nice the fire engine being part of you know the community the lockers similar to my own in kind of what they do this one is all the equipment for the driver and kind of extra stuff he needs extra hoses nozzles just various bits it's a, a various locker of various things and just spare parts and fuses and all kinds of useful stuff in here we have the, the very stereotypical american firefighting axe and the halligan tool which is kind of like the the more 
modern replacement tool which the guy who was showing us around was saying that is such a useful and versatile tool they can do so much with this opening doors prizing through spaces just kind of this is a very very good tool and the axe which generally is used as a sledgehammer rather than axe these days to knock your way through something rather than try and split things because if you try and split things they tend to get stuck and it wastes time and effort behind that we also have fire rakes for when you're in brushland to try and spread out and clear areas to stop the combustibles from burning that all folds down and then these little metal things which are tools for breaking into cars because over in america it's still something where you can lock yourself out of a car and say you've left your baby or something in the car and you need to get in over in the uk we stopped that being possible in like the 70s uh, but still a thing over here so need the special tool to break into cars stunning fuel goes in here it's a diesel obviously finishing up more gear this is a fan used for what they call positive draft to be able to try and keep airflow going away from where you are and then just more general random equipment this is a fully stocked fire engine unlike my own which has none of this stuff so the size of these rear tyres is more or less the same as Jupiter. Obviously the rims are in far better condition and nice and shiny whereas Jupiter's been painted silver and it looks pretty tacky. The tyres, much better condition, much more tread left on them. And this one has way more space between the top of the wheel and the arch. Like Jupiter in comparison has been slammed and is a lot lower. And this one has been right, risen up. The tyres also look a bit thicker and the suspension setup is definitely far more impressive than Jupiter. I just have a, a single set of leaf springs. This has a double set of leaf springs, which makes sense. In actual weight, I don't think there's much difference between the two trucks. More or less the same, because they are more or less a similar truck. In fact, in terms of what they're designed to do, this and Jupiter are basically the same thing. They're just, the design is very different, but they are a fairly good direct comparison, despite being like 30 years apart, well, more than that, 35 years apart in design. This truck here is presently eight years old and the trucks in America, they'll be used in active service for about 20 years. They'll do 10 years on the front line and then they'll be put as a reserve vehicle that we bought out in the case of a big emergency or if a frontline truck needs to go in for repairs, they'll bring out the reserve trucks. So this one's got maybe two more years of frontline service before it gets put to be a, a backup truck, which is longer than we go in the UK. UK, I think it's a, a bit shorter time that they're a primary fighting appliance. Uh, I think it's like seven or eight years and they go to a smaller backup fire station, a smaller, you know, like a country or yeah, a lesser fire service. And then they do another similar amount of time before being sold off or disposed of, which is what happened to Jupiter. Coming around to the back of the truck, we have uh, the permanent license plate because it's a fire engine, it doesn't change. Then where my pump is on my trucks, we have another locker. This one contains the jaws of life, as we'd call them in the UK, but these are both cutters and spreaders. Apparently, you can get dedicated cutting tools, which are far better, or dedicated spreading tools, which are far better. This one's a combo because it takes up less space. You only need one tool rather than two, and it is not as good as either, but it will get the job done. It's for, you know, getting to a car accident and ripping open or cutting open the car to be able to rescue somebody stuck inside. And then you've got the hydraulic pump here as well, and the associated cabling and power that is all in there. And then a nice big Pierce logo on the back. Coming up here, we have more of these nice little foot pedals and a nice handrail here. Now we go up here, we have all of the hoses. So up here is where they store all of their, their hoses laid flat rather than the way that we do it in the UK and where I have them rolled up in my side lockers. The other big advantage of this is that these hoses here are constantly attached to the pump. They're permanently hard attached, so all you have to do is pull that off, turn the pump on, and you've got water. You don't have to open anything else up. That is ready to go straight away, which is a far better system than mine, where you've got to open the side locker, roll the hose out, and plug it in. This, straight away, ready to go. Fast appearing. Also, very important on American vehicles, the American flag. Which actually, I really like the touch of that. I like the patriotism and how proud people are here of their heritage and of their country. I mean, nothing in the UK runs like that. But honestly, 
that's a really, really nice touch. So yeah, good on these guys. Moving around further, we've got the ladder up there, which is basically the same length as anyone in the UK. It's basically the same length as my one on Jupiter and deploys in a kind of similar way. Only it comes down from the side. So we've got these clamps here that hold it on and the whole thing comes down and that's how you get your ladder off, which actually is a lot better than pulling it off because for my one, you pull it off down the back over the back of the pump. So if you've got the pump operator there or someone trying to rub it hose, you've got to pull it over their head. Whereas this keeps that all separate. So a lot better thought out. In any tight spot, this doesn't work at all. So maybe not such a good idea, but sometimes really good idea. Tight spots, nah, not so much because then you have to climb up anyway and take it off. But yeah, for this and purposes of looking cool, this wins massive points. How do you make it go up? It's very complex. And you push up. I'm enjoying this far too much. That's so cool. There you go. And then you'll uh, re-engage that lock. We spec the lever, yep. It just goes right back on it. And then there's one in the back, does the same thing. That's cool. I'm enjoying this far too much. Now we turn it off. Looking into here, this is all medical equipment. One of my lockers on Jupiter is dedicated to medical equipment, but I don't have anywhere near as much as this stuff because again, fully functioning actual fire engine. In here, we have more miscellaneous equipment, float and ropes for attempting various different rescues, and then more hoses. What's also worth noting here, is that the connector on American stuff is very different to a, what I've got on Jupiter. Jupiter's all quick release stuff. This is all threaded, so your connections you know, threaded together, which is going to be slower to put it together, but it's going to be far less likely to come apart under stress. Again, here we have the, the little holes for the oxygen to each side, very clever. And finally, another locker with more equipment, chainsaws for chopping down and getting into places, and some more fittings and adapters for the pump. This side is the main pumping side for the pump. So we've got the three outlet, uh, two outlets, and then water can come in this side as well. So everything is operated from the other side, and water comes out of this side with a couple of just little controls. The operator is the other side, stuff's meant to come out this side. The interesting thing as well to note here is on the two different types of connector, so that you can feel if it's full of smoke and you can't say which way the water's coming from. So that's this end feels different, to this end. So you can pick it up and go, right, the water must be coming from here, therefore I need to follow the hose that way. Which is a really, really clever thing because you don't really do it so much with my stuff where it's plugged together. You can kind of feel which one's got the casting on it, but that's a far more clever and uh, immediate way of, find, yeah, of finding out what it is. Coming back here, we have the, <coughs> the other crew compartment, which is more or less the same as this. The mirror, it turns out, is so you can see what's coming when you open the door. So as you kind of push it open, you can make sure there isn't a car coming or someone or you know, a cyclist and so you don't kill them and you can see what's that way. That's actually, yeah, that's quite useful. Oh wow, it's got electric windows. That's, that's far more plush than my one. I've got handles in mine. And then this side here, we have the passenger navigator and just general assistant side with a laptop in it. So this is part of the uh, the way they track the machines and can update the status. So engine seven responding to emergency can be sent from that. It has a list of all the machines in the city, what they're doing, their status, their operational, where they are, and then brings up maps and navigation. So in the olden days, all of that was done over the radio, but now modern days just uses a computer, which, you know, makes sense, I suppose. That's quite impressive, isn't it? And then, yeah, brings us back round to the front of the truck. And then we've got the nice siren, traditional wailing siren there, flashing lights, and all in all, quite an impressive piece of kit. Sweet. All right. When are you ready? Ready. All right. I'm going for a ride. <laughs> Oh, 
this is awesome. This is a lot smoother and a lot more quiet than my truck, like infinitely. Oh, sure it is. And the suspension's a lot nicer. <laughs> Pierce is definitely known for their, their good suspension. Yeah? Uh, it rides really nicely. I mean, is this just all engine under that? It is. Man, that is a big ass block. It is. Right. Mine's got, it comes about level with your knee, uh -huh. and then I've got the access panels on there to get to my truck. Okay. But, but this is high enough to put your arm on. This is. Oh, yeah. A massive great truck. Like the visibility's not bad either. Like you got, it's a bit weird because my truck you are pretty much sat on the ferry front of it, whereas you've got a lot more dash on this, uh -huh. blocking your view. But like your visibility on the back's pretty good. Yeah, it really. The only bad bad blind spots on this is if I have a car, let's say right next to where you're at. Yeah, that is hard. But that's that's about it. Having a blind spot down there, just down that corner, is about the same as my own truck back home. I've got nothing down that corner at all. But. Oh, listen to that engine. Oh, yeah. And of course, my truck's a, a manual rather than the auto, but. Oh, is it? Yeah, so you can really, you can run it a bit more. But I mean, she's in top gear by the time you're doing 30 miles an hour, so. <laughs> and the first gear on mine is just a crawler. It yeah. does like two mile an hour. <laughs> so you normally just start it in second. Start in second. Enjoyed that far too much. <laughs> oh, just a little ride in this has been so much fun. Oh, what a truck! <sighs> Thank you very much. Absolutely, indeed. that was a real pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's the end of this little video looking at this American fire truck. I have loved it. It's just, it's been really nice to look around an active machine and just see the differences between the UK and America. So a massive great thank you to the guys here at Station 7 for being so kind and answering all my stupid questions and allowing me to have a, a good look over their truck. They're great guys, they do a great job, so thank you very much guys for your service and you've made my trip. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've enjoyed it anywhere near as much as me because it's been great. So please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Did you like it? Do you know someone who's got an American fire truck? Or have you been on an American fire truck? And you know, share this video amongst your fire engine buddies. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. But if you want to have a bit more look at an English fire truck, click up here. And if you want to have a look at my own fire truck breaking down, how about you click down there? Cheers guys. We'll see you later. And uh, I'm going to go look at the truck again.